Okay, in this video I want to show you very quickly how I combine two filters from Topaz. Now, the first filter I will use in this video is Topaz Clarity. Now, in the past I used on some of my images, and especially the outside images, I used something called Nick Color FX4. Now, one of the main filters I used in Color FX4 was actually Tonal Contrast. And I think you all know it, it's, it's giving a little bit more pop to the image. And you can also do it overboard and make it real funky, like a cartoon looking image. But for me it always was a little bit more pop to the image. And especially when you see here, this shot was by the way taken 100% with natural light, no modifiers, and this is actually straight out of the camera. So we're gonna make this image pop a little bit more and give it a little bit more color with tinting with Restyle. Now, clarity is actually I always say it's tonal contrast on steroids. So let's look what clarity actually does. And again, in these videos, it's not my intention to give you a full rundown of what the whole filter can do, because I didn't write the filter, so I don't know everything about the filter. But I will just show you how I use it in my workflow, and I hope you get something out of that. So let's go to Topaz Labs and go to clarity. Now the first thing I want to make absolutely clear, I don't want my images to look like cartoons. I do like that extra pop, but I don't want my images to look like, no, let's say to this cartoon. For me this is too much, this is way over the top. It's by the way a preset I made myself, but just to show you guys this is too much. So okay, we don't want a cartoon look, right? This looks, well, terrible. So I created two other ones, Fashion Awesome and Fashion Slide. As you can see in Fashion Awesome, there's a little bit less in the dark areas, and in Slide, there's a little bit more. And I think for this one, I will go to the Fashion Slide. Now, the sliders over here, you can do so much with it. If you have the filter, just start playing with it. The micro contrast actually controls a lot of the, the look you will get. The, I call it a little bit the pop. There you go. And you can of course go to the low contrast, medium contrast and high contrast. And just start playing with it and see what it does. It's more for the higher contrast areas. There you go. And you can of course create your own style and store it like I did here with my awesome slide, pop and cartoon. But of course you can also control tone levels. You can have a little bit less black level to make it a bit more washed out, sorry, a bit more contrasty, or a little bit more black level. There you go. The nice thing is, if you hover over it, you will actually see what it does. Targets large shadows and highlights, contrast variations, medium midtones, and of course, low to shorter midtones. It also has an option for masks, but I have to be really honest that I don't use this. This is something I will do in Photoshop. So, Let's look at the original and the processed. And as you can see, the process gives you a lot more pop. There we go. And press OK. OK, now we have the file in Photoshop. And you will have the before and after. Now, if you want the effect not on some of the parts of the picture, in this case, I want it on all of the picture, but if you don't want it, very simple, go to Layer, Layer Mask, and Hide or Reveal All. Let's say you want to reveal all, but want to take it away somewhere. Then you have a white piece of paper, take your brush with black paint, and just paint over the areas where you don't want the effect. If you do want to see the effect, press the X key, and now it will change the paint black to white, and paint the effect back in. So don't use eraser tools because, well, with eraser tools you can only go back so many steps. And when you use paint, you can go away all the steps that you made. Okay, in this case I don't want this. Okay. Now, color for me is very important. And of course you can use plugins like Alien Skin Exposure and get the most beautiful film looks. And you can customize those a lot. And I, I have to be honest, I love Alien Skin Exposure, DxO Film Pack. Those are the two that I used a lot. So let's see what I can do with Restyle with this image. The first thing, of course, again, make a new layer. Now go to Filter, Topaz Lab, and Restyle. 
And again, it's not alien skin exposure. Alien skin exposure and DxO Film Pack are great in emulating film looks. This is something completely different. That's why I don't see them as competitors. I see them as something that can be combined in your workflow. If you want a real custom tinting, you go for Restyle. If you want a film look and you want to customize the film look, I think nothing is better than Alien Skin Exposure. And DxO Film Pack is also very nice, but I think Alien Skin Exposure 5 with film looks is just awesome. But as you can see here, this is something completely different. This is more like a tinting option. It's not a film pack emulator. So let's say we want something in the fashion category. Now the first thing, and I also explained this in the video on restyling, is when I look at this, it's, you know, it's okay, but for me it's way over. And those settings actually show you something that's not what you can do with it. If I look at this, it's, it's an awesome black and white conversion, right? I, I really like this, it's amazing. But now you start playing with it. Now you can start playing with your colors. Now, of course, with the black and white, the most impact will have the luminance channel. Of course, you can play with your primary color, make it more moody or less moody. In this case, I like this. Or you can play with your secondary colors. I wouldn't do this too much because then you get some nasty side effects. But you can start playing with it. And of course, up here you have the opacity slider. So you can really mix it in. So black and white, really cool. What can we do more? Because it's not only black and white we want, of course. We want colors. Well, the first thing you do is you can go through the previews. But the previews are actually way, way too harsh. And I don't like the previews. I actually gave Topaz the tip, start with everything on 50%. And then you can get a good overview of what it does. So let's say I want a little bit bluish tints. You can go through your presets and find something with a little bit bluish. Let's say... A little bit more down here. There we go. You run this. And it looks pretty nice. It's a cross-processing effect, but way too intense. So first I will start at zero. I will just add a little bit of the opacity. Until I find a point that I like. Here we go. Maybe 48%. And now I start playing, not with these, but I start playing with my tinting. Maybe take away a little bit of the saturation. Play a little bit with my black levels and midtones. On a real moody shot. You can even add a little bit of structure, but because we already did clarity, I won't touch that one. Okay, so this is one look, for example, and here you have the original and you have the processed. If you say that's a little bit too much, well, you can find another one. There are like a thousand settings in here. It's way, way too much to show you in one video, but it's cool to experiment with. So let's take this one, go to your opacity, and just add it in. Okay, start playing with the tint again. And again, this is how I do it. A lot of people will say, well, I'll do it differently and I get better results, or different results. Well, that's okay. Photoshop has so many things to do differently that there's no good and right. There we go. And there we have the original and the processed version. And I really like this because somehow you get a different look and because you can customize it to, to no extent I've ever seen before, you can really create your custom look. So if you're into tinting and you really like the old vintage looks and well just check this one out it's not an expensive plugin and I think you can do a lot of stuff with it. Now if you have something that you like because I think a lot of people will get confused like how will I ever find back N263 or N256? Well whenever you have something that you really like you can of course add it to your collection. You can make your own collection and store all the presets there. So let's say new collection, let's call it Frank. And I can just store my preset there. Let's say okay. And let's say we call this uh, blue with yellow. And just store it. And 
And this is something I also did in Alien Skin Exposure and DxO Film Pack. I will always take one preset that I really like, start changing everything, and then store it. And then the next time I have an image, I can run that same preset again. And here you go. And you have the original and the retinted image. And for me, tinting is very important. It just gives your image a little bit more style, a little bit more... It's different, you know, it's not like it's straight out of the camera. It just gives it a little bit more atmosphere. So check out Topaz Clarity for all the pop in your image and Restyle for the image. You will see an affiliate code here. Follow that link, please, and use the code you see below it for a cool discount. So see you guys next time. And this was the video about Topaz Clarity and Topaz Restyle.